thank you so much for uh, just hitting that button and hitting that link rather and watching this video. I wanted to come and to speak to you uh, relative to a prophetic word that the Lord put in my heart concerning you. Uh, those of you in the family of churches fellowship, those of you in the new home churches and the body of Christ at large, but I'm actually making this video for those that are in the Family of Churches Fellowship International, FOCFI. As you should know by now, in July, we're going to have our uh, third convocation. And this year, our theme is refocus. Refocus and uh, refocusing on Christ specifically. But when one refocuses on Christ, uh, there are a myriad of other benefits that uh, come back into one's life as a consequence of refocusing on Christ. In fact, about it, many of the things that um, we are searching for, the things that we are longing for, are things that uh, will materialize when we as the body of Christ, and in specifically um, leaders in the body of Christ, when we refocused when we refocus rather on Christ. So often, even as uh, spiritual leaders, we get distracted by the stress of what we do. We get distracted by uh, the pain, the disappointment of it. Uh, we get distracted even by the success of it. Uh, we can experience uh, certain measures of success and uh, it can pull us away from our true focus. It pulls us away from a Christocentric focus. In other words, Christ is no longer the main thing for us. And there are seasons that we have to do what? We have to refocus. I know it's happened in my life. And one of the biggest um, hurdles to uh, cross is that of your focus, being able to stay on point no matter what's going on around you. When you're experiencing seasons of uh, barrenness, seasons of drought, uh, it's difficult because you know we become impatient. We want to see the vision. We want to see the fruit of everything God said come to pass. And so our emotions take over. And then when we see the fruit of everything just bursting at the seams, many times we get caught up in uh, self-exaltation. We get caught up in pride. Uh, we get caught up in the celebration and we forget to continue the process. And so we, we ultimately end up in the same place. We end up in a place of brokenness uh, that requires that we do one thing, refocus. And so sad it is that most of the time before we think to refocus, we do everything else. We try to buy our way out of it. We try to fix something that uh, only God can rectify. We do everything but return to our true love or our original state. We fail to repent. And to repent simply means to return to the highest point. Pent. Penthouse. Pentacle. It is the highest point. Re to do again. To return back to that highest place where God established you, where you saw God move mightily for you, where God delivered you, where God blessed you, where you walked in your greatest or your greater, you know, your greater uh, purpose and anointing. When you refocus, you return to that place. And so the word of the Lord today is to refocus. Now, I want to specifically deal with those of you that are watching this because I know you've been here. If you've not been here, uh, just keep on living and keep on serving God, you will find this place and hopefully you'll remember this word that I've deposited into your heart today. It's that place where God, you know what God told you, you know what God showed you, and it seems like none of it is coming to pass. It's like your life is so void of what you thought you would have at this time or this season of your life, that you're almost wondering, you're pondering, should I quit? But then there's something on the inside of you that just won't let you quit because you, you, you have a firm conviction through the pain that something's going to break not long from now. 
But right now, it's like your ministry, your business, your life, your marriage, your money. It's like everything's in a season of barrenness because God shows us where he's bringing us to. But he does not show us the route he's going to bring us through or down to get to that place that he's shown us. And there's a text found in um, Isaiah 54, in, in Isaiah 54, and I'm just going to be a few minutes, but I wanted to deposit this word into your spirit so that you can understand the spirit of our convocation for 2017. We're coming together to refocus on some things concerning Christ, and as a consequence, Christ is going to renew some things, rebirth some things, revitalize some things, restore some things. But in Isaiah 54, 1 through 4, and I'm reading from the Message Bible version, it reads like this. <clears throat> Sing, barren woman who has never had a baby. Fill the air with song, you who've never experienced childbirth. Rejoice, even in your quote unquote barrenness. He says, rejoice, sing, fill the, fill the air with song. You're ending up, watch this, you who, who's, who's been barren, never experienced childbirth, Watch this. You're ending up with far more children than all those childbearing women. God says so. Clear lots of ground for your tents. Make your tents large. Spread out. Think big. Use plenty of rope. Drive the tent pigs deep. You're going to need lots of elbow room for your growing family. You're going to take over whole nations. You're going to resettle abandoned cities. Don't be afraid. You're not going to be embarrassed. Don't hold back. You're not going to come up short. You'll forget all about the humiliations of your youth and the indignities of being a widow will fade from memory. God is talking to his people here and he's using figurative language because Israel, in their case, because of sin, had come up short in terms of the fruit that God promised and in, and in terms of the fruit that God intended for them. And they had, they had been barren so long in terms of producing or seeing manifestation that God had to, re he had to refocus them on the promises because the circumstances that they had been in by the consequence of their own behavior put them in a state of mind that they could not see anything but barrenness. And God says, I know you've been barren. I know it's not worked. I know that uh, you've had season after season after season and no fruit has come up. But get ready because I, you've been watching all of these other people give birth to what God showed them and what God gave them. But the reality is that you're going to end up with more children than all of those who've already given birth. And that's the prophetic word to many of you right now. You've been in seasons where you've seen people give birth and bring to manifestation all of the things that God put in them while you're sitting there and the thing God put in you seems to be lying dormant, no life to it. You've not even given birth yet. And you, 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 you felt like you would have seen the manifestation of what God gave you long before they even came on the scene. And for whatever reason, your, your manifestation, your productivity, your fruit, the birth of your vision has been delayed. And then God says, watch this. He says, you're going to give you're going to give birth to far more children and all of those that you've seen come before you. Some of you who are pastors that are watching this, 
you've seen ministries that just seem like they pop up overnight and they just flourish. And, and you've been doing this for years and it seems like nothing is happening for you. you your ministry has not even gotten to a place where they can afford uh, to have you full time and your heart is pure and you, you're trying to walk and live upright. You, you're teaching the people of God. You're shepherding the Lord's people and the enemy is trying to take your circumstances to crush your spirit. And the Lord would have you to hit on this link to watch this video and the Lord will say to you, get ready because things are changing, things are turning. And those that you've seen who've given birth to theirs doesn't even compare to what God is getting ready to bring to bear in your life. And then he says in verse two, clear lots of ground for your tents, make your tents large. Don't think small because what God is getting ready to release. See, this thing is called grace. There's a grace. You've done all of the work. You've done, you've done, you've tilled the ground. You've planted the seed. You've, you've pulled the weeds, but only God gives the increase. And now God says the grace for increase is on your life. The grace for increase is on your ministry. The grace for increase is on your family. And the Lord says, don't make your don't make your capacity too small. Don't be afraid to make your capacity large. Don't consider the things of old and make your capacity small because you're afraid you're going to be disappointed again. Because he goes on to say uh, down in verse four, he says, don't be afraid you're not going to be embarrassed. Don't, 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 don't be afraid. You're not going to be embarrassed. Don't hold back. You're not going to come up short. You'll forget all the humiliations of your youth. The things that happened many years ago or didn't happen many years ago have no bearing on this season that you are presently in. You are in the perfect alignment of the will of God. This is your time. And the Lord said, refocus, go back to your original vision, go back to your original passion. Go back to your original blueprint, the, 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 the burden of years of, of seemingly coming up short has caused you to diminish and shrink. That's a good word. Miniaturize your vision. But the Lord said, go back and revisit your vision. Though you've not given birth yet, what's getting ready to come out of you is going to be far. It's going to be far greater than anything you've seen come out of anyone else. This is on your ministry. This is on your family. This is on your business. This is on your life. This is on your, your finances. The Lord said, what's coming out of you now is going to be greater than anything you've ever seen and you will not be humiliated. Forget the indignities of your youth. Forget what happened many years ago because the grace that is upon your life now is a grace that you've never had before. Now, I want to say to you, those of you that are part of the fellowship, FOCFI, as we come together and as we refocus on Christ, and I, I, you're going to get all of the information relative to what's going to happen. We're going to have a lot of training in the day, in the morning time, a lot of training. We're going to have a, an institute to, to refocus on the things that we need to refocus on to become better. And at night we're gonna have, oh my God, we're gonna have a high time of praise and worship and preaching. But when you leave the fellowship this year, you will not leave empty. You will not leave empty. There's going to be a deposit into your life and into your ministry that's going to shift everything into another dimension. Let me read a prophetic word the Lord gave me. And um, those of you who are part of the fellowship, we will make certain to email this word to you as well. But listen to what the Lord said to me as I was pondering this verse last Saturday, actually. I was sitting in an airport pondering this verse. And the Lord said, barren visions, barren visions. Now listen to this carefully. And ideas are being fertilized. As the times have been slow to render fruit, 
This present season shall yield exponential fruit. Now, when God spoke this to me, it was really personally received because even in my own life, a lot of times you look at a person and you say, well, man, he has it going on. But a person has it going on relative to the vision that God has put in their heart. And sometimes somebody that seems to be on top of the world in their own heart and mind, they're at the bottom of it in comparison to the thing God showed them. So when God spoke this to me, it leaped in my spirit because it speaks to me. He says, as the times have been slow to render fruit, this present season shall yield exponential fruit. Great branches will grow out in all directions and many shall eat from your overflow. Reject the lying spirit of hopelessness. This has only been about the timing of God. You've only been delayed because of the timing of God. It's really not been, been about sin or you doing anything wrong. It's just been about the timing of God. Everything is budding and the harvest will be overwhelming in not many days. Big grapes carried on large branches. You must make your plans much larger. The thing that is next is too large for your present capacity. There's an unlimited grace that is falling upon you. And I want to say to all of you that are connected to me and consider me to be your covering. This word speaks directly to your situation. And Father, I want to pray before I let you go. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, as I speak to the people of God, the sons and daughters of God, the men and women of God, the, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, I release the spirit of this word into their ministries, into their lives, into everything concerning them. Everything will become exponentially greater. And God, I thank you now by the Holy Spirit for touching them with an anointing that makes them certain that this word is for them. And I command in the name of Jesus, the blessing of God to run them down on every side. And I thank you for it. I give you praise in Jesus' name. I love you. That is the word of the Lord. I look forward to talking to you again real soon. God bless you. We function like family. We feel like family because we are family. F-O-C-F-I.